I'm uh, Frank Zamor with uh, Showcase. We're an uh, Atlanta-based, uh, started out as a photography sales company. Uh, we do, now we do broadcast video sales as well. 35-year-old company, uh, located at 2323 Cheshire Bridge Road in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, what I've brought in tonight is one of my favorite cameras, one of my favorite $15,000, $16,000 cameras, the Canon C300. Uh, very unique camera in design and features. It takes all of your EF or EFS lenses that are manufactured by Canon or any other, this happens to be a Tamron lens that's on here right now with an EF Canon mount. Fits directly on there with full uh, controls that are that you can see in the viewfinder and operate the, can the lenses, uh, aperture and control. Uh, I've got it hooked up to a Red Rock rig for, with its cage and a follow focus system. The Red Rock rig allows you to add several different items uh, such as the follow focus or monitors or whatever you want to do. This other device you see here is the Atomus Samurai. It is a 10-bit uh, a, a 422 uh, recorder that records onto a hard drive that you provide or an SSD drive and it, full, it records at full HD quality up to 180 megabits of record coming in HD SDI from the output of my Canon C300. The camera records at 50 megabits uh, and this obviously gives you uncompressed HD here for putting onto the big screen or whatever you want to do with it. Um, the camera comes with a battery, a full-size Canon battery, fits right inside here. It'll get inside here. It gives you 100, 287 minutes of record time at full charge. Uh, it holds two compact flash cards that record at 50 megabits. Uh, a little unique on this is that if you were a DSLR user, you were only using a, a single compact flash card. This one will record until the card is full and kick over to the other card. Uh, so let's say uh, uh, it's, uh, some of the bigger cards you can get a lot longer record times on, much longer than the 20 minutes that the DSLRs get. Or you can have them set so that they record simultaneously. Uh, that way you have a backup if you want. Um, also has a handle on the side with an aperture control up here at the top right hand side of it. A record button. We also have X2 XLR inputs. The monitor adapter does come with the camera. You can actually focus with this or you can use the viewfinder. Uh, but two XLR inputs with full audio controls up here to record our levels. Um, some of the controls here are the outputs that a DSLR doesn't have. We have our HDSDI out to go to our recorder. You have a headphone jack out, time code in or out, you set it, a gen lock and sync on there. Uh, we also have another 8.4 uh, volt DC input. SD card you would want to use for taking photos, which the camera does do photos as well, or doing settings in the camera. An HDMI out and a separate remote. So a lot of outputs that you won't see on a DSLR. Um, under this uh, rubber cover here is what you see is WFT. This is their new Wi-Fi option. Uh, I can't remember the model number off the top of my head. Uh, I'm under pressure. But the, you can actually output Wi-Fi to any type of iPad or, or uh, smartphone device. And up to 50 people can view it but it can only be controlled by one. So if your camera AC can actually control the camera by not being on the camera. Uh, and speaking of the AC, one of my favorite switches on here, on our camera on off switch, you'll see a lock. Now nothing on this camera will work. And that way you keep your director of photographer from, from messing with the camera and making changes that the AC is responsible for in the long run. Uh, it's a very neat device. Uh, a very neat option. I'm going to have you hold on to this for a second. I want to show one other feature. I'm going to pull this down out of the way. This is our record device. Uh, another neat, neat feature of the monitor is that it can spin around and flip down like this. And then we can take that image and flip it upright. Uh, remember, I have it locked. Uh, flip it in the upright position so that the AC can pull focus from here 
with the DP looking in on the viewfinder. It is capable, you'll see it's an ISO setting, and yes, I do have that, if you're reading that correctly. That is a 20,000 uh, ISO on this camera. Uh, and if you can see, I know you can't see that monitor, but there's very, very little noise and a very usable signal. Uh, I actually didn't realize it was set there, so I'm going to crank that back down to where it's optimal at 850. And I'm also going to, which my, my lens was at F11, and I'm going to open it back up to 28. And you see that it handles beautifully. Um, but the ISO, I think, is a very neat feature on this camera and allows you to make adjustments. Uh, for that. Uh, right here on our color temperature change, you can go in and adjust your color temperature manually if you want. Let's see if I can get over there. Uh, I don't want to be there. Whoops, it's doing a white balance. Hold on. Uh, that's not what I wanted, but here I'm going to change this to uh, here, and now I can hit my function button back to whoops. Of course, I'm under pressure here to make it work right. Yeah. It's not what I want. There we go. Okay, so I couldn't remember how to get it over there. Now I can make my full adjustments here on my color temperature uh, to set it for where I might want to have it. It also has automatic uh, white balance as well. So there's a quick little run through of the camera. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them in the shop at uh, Showcase.